Can't Even by Anne Helen Peterson, how millennials became the burnout generation. <laughs> so she's like a former professor and she has like taught um, a number of millennials um, in her career and it's just her conversations with um, students and um, different information about like the baby boomer generation and um, comparing it to comparing it to the millennial uh, generation and like the in-betweens um, and the years like in between the two um, so you get like pressures, expectations millennials put on themselves, um, expectations by their parents, society, um, so on. So like post-secondary um, dairy education, overall education, job security, um, disillusionment, disillusionment of do what you love, um, the job right out of university type of thing. Um, the baby boomers, employment, overwork, um, leisure or lack thereof, parenting and so on. So it's a mix, it's a decent mix of like explaining um, former students situations and um, bringing in the information so it isn't just here's a student story which like sometimes like I'm not huge on but in this way it worked because it was in, in um, the merge of the story and information worked well so it's a good look at like the stress and expectation of this age group that they put on themselves and what um, their parents and others put on them. Um, so like if you're doing like a look at different generations, this can be a decent look um, at not just millennials, but um, baby boomers who are parents to some some millennial to some of the millennials on the um, just beginning of the millennial age gap. So um, who are um, on the older side of the age range. Um, So, um, millennials became the first generation to fully conceptualize themselves as walking college resumes. With assistance from our parents, society, and educators, we came to understand ourselves con as, um, consciously or not as human, human capital subjects to be optimized for better performance in the economy. So, like, um... The pressure to achieve wouldn't be um, wouldn't have existed without the notion that college, no matter the cost, would provide the path to middle class prosperity and safe ability. But as millions of um, but as millions of overeducated and unemployed and student debt laden um, millennials will tell you, just because everyone around you believes in the gospel doesn't mean it's necessarily true. So. It's um, depending on, so it may be a good or bad thing, like job prospect wise, like as of right now, um, depending on what um, a millennial has gone to school for and might not. Um, be a huge pool. Um,
and she brings in like um, different types of references as well. So like in 2005, Steve Jobs delivered a, the commencement speech, commencement address at Stanford University and reaffirmed the idea, um, the idea the university university millennial graduates have spent much of their lives internalizing quote um your work is going to fill a larger part of your life and the only way to truly um to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work and quote job said um and the only way to do great work is to love what you do if you haven't found it yet keep looking don't settle so that goes into the do what you love type of thing so like if you do love science, dance, or whatever, find a way, like have that nine to five, but like do that on like the weekend or whatever, or after work or whatever. So there's like that. Um, um, digital exhaustion, burnout, and whatever. So there um, brings that into it. So um, uh, a few different ideas and points of view are brought into this book and yeah it's a decent look at um the burnout of a lot of millennials so yeah can't even happy readings